So we were following and pleading with him all the way out there. Please, just tell us, please. I swear on my life this happened. He gets in the car, doors open. He looks up, and the only reason why I'm telling you this is because he died. He looks up at Marco and I, and he goes, it happened. Closed the door, and off he went. Now, the reason why I share that is because that's not something that I can put any weight on for the documentary for people like you, right? But as a personal message for me, knowing that level of validation on the inside, it kept us going. It was like, okay, why on earth would he have done that? Why on earth would he say? And that kept Marco and I going, and that was a personal level of validation that... Is there any conventional explanation why the military shut everything down, why they had military barricades set up around that area? No, they did try to say that the creature was this guy who got like some deformities... Um, but I've seen the guy Modine or something like that. But uh, you talk to the witnesses. But why would the why would the military yeah, shut I, the town I know. down because a guy yeah, with then, deformities? And then there. for the doctors in the hospital, they said though there was a, like a midget having a baby or something weird, just something that was just so ridiculous. It was like, and you talk to the witnesses, and they're just like, oh come on, I'm not even gonna, you know, that's laughable at best. You know, I mean, these girls came within eight to ten feet. Three, three women, Katya. Two sisters, Liliani and Valkyria, 14, 16, and 21. They got within 8 to 10 feet in broad daylight of this creature. And one of the things that doesn't come across in the film, when they saw this thing, they're looking like, what are we looking at here? They're walking through this field, and it's up against a cinder block wall. And one of them was looking, at it, is that a, what is that? And it was crouched by the wall. It was weak and feeble. And uh, one of them kind of like screeched. Ah, like, what is that? And it turned and it looked right at the girls, locked eyes on them. Liliana grabs her younger daughter, her younger sister, who's 14, Valkyria, and makes a hightails it out of there. Katya is 21. She's frozen in her tracks, locked eyes with this creature, and it's communicating with her. Please help me. I'm, uh, he wants help. It's weak, it's weak and it's feeble and it's scared and it's crouched down. Uh, Liliani realizes that Katya is back there. She gets, I don't know, 100 feet down the path. She leaves her sister, stay here, I'm going back to get Katya. She runs back. And I asked Katya and I asked all the girls, during that moment of contact, when you lock eyes, I know it's only a brief second, but during that moment of contact, what did you feel? Like, put me there. That's where the title comes from, moment of contact, because that was when they locked eyes on this creature. And that's when Katya said, help me, I'm scared. And it was feeble and suffering. And it's, it's a very powerful moment. And, and, and these girls have been saying the same thing. The mother. It's the first time I'd ever reported on these so-called like men in dark suits that show up and intimidate witnesses. To be honestly, I've been hearing about those cases for so many times, but I've avoided them because it's got so much baggage from men in black. It just, it's just ridiculous. I just didn't even want to be associated with it. But I'd heard it. I can go on until I'm blue in the face. I'd go until tomorrow morning with the amount of cases, with generals too. But this time, when the mother said that these men showed up and tried to get the daughters to say they were lying and offered her a briefcase full of $100 bills and they could relocate, um, I don't know. For some reason, I said, okay, for the first time in 25 years, I'm going to report on these guys. And I did. And it's in the movie. You can hear the mother talking about it, and she's so emotional. And the mother came back to the location right after it happened, the smell, that stench, and the yeah. footprint on the ground. I mean, everybody talks about that stench that it was so... They said, if you ever take like a, a skunk, multiply that by like 100,000, that would give you some indication of the level of like how putrid and nasty. It was paralyzing. And it stayed in, like it stayed in the areas, like at the hospitals when they did the x-rays. And everybody talks about it. That stench, like, it's unbelievable. Like it fills your navel cavities and doesn't leave for a week. It was incredible. And, and they all said the same thing. And they couldn't get it out. They couldn't get it out. Yeah, they sanitized the hospital. The, the guy said that he had to close off that wing of the hospital while they were sanitizing it because it was so intense. You know, so I... I. How long did it last for? I heard days and weeks is what I heard from people. And and even the mother said when she, when she went to where the creature was, she said that the stench, even there after the creature was gone, got in her nasal cavities and she tried to flush it out with water and saline or whatever and... and and uh, she just couldn't get it out of her nasal cavities. Really crazy. But they all did. I mean, everybody talked about that stench.